Okay, so I hope uh, everyone can see the, the PowerPoint. Yes, no problem. Excellent, great. Um, so let me get started. Um, I'll start by, um, I've, I've already given uh, so many thank yous, but uh, so I'll start thanking my co-author. So this is, um, it is indeed a paper on uh, foreign direct investment. Um, it's joint work with um, Ms. Uh, now Dr. Vu Hong Ha. Um, she was my student uh, for five years at Yokohama National University and she's recently received her, her PhD. Um, so this is more her work. Um, of course, we worked on it together, um, but I do wanna emphasize that, that she did all the hard work and uh, this is really her, her idea for something new um, that she was very, very passionate about. Um, my own field is, is of course international economics and um, mostly international trade, uh, but you know, um, we can't avoid studying and learning more about foreign direct investment. So when my um, student suggested this topic, um, I wanted to encourage it and um, both for her sake, but also a chance for me to, um, to learn more about this very complex um, subfield of, of, of thing we call FDI. So um, I'll, sh I'll talk about what, what we found in our results, um, but I know there's many other FDI expert, um, experts um, in the session. So I'm looking forward to lots of comments and criticisms um, along the way or when I'm done. Um, so uh, I have about 25, 23 slides. Um, I guess I have about an hour, gentlemen. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I'll probably take the hour. I, I might finish a little early. Um, if I'm talking too fast or if there's something um, you'd like me to clarify, then probably uh, send me a chat or send the, a, a chat to the group and I'll try to answer that or my, my, um, my hosts will, will help me answer that. あの、一応日本語、日本語話せますけど、あの、FDI の専門店、あの、単語はあまり得意じゃないけど、質問があればま、英語の方が分かりやすいけど、あの、日本語でもあの、全然大丈夫です。分かりにくくとは分かんないけ
there are many papers on, on global value chains. Um, there are many papers on global value chains um, and foreign direct investment. Um, to our knowledge, however, looking at research in the direction we're looking at, um, that is to say, um, foreign direct investment on the left-hand side and global value chains on the right-hand side is very scarce. Um, and the few papers, we, we found about maybe three or four papers that, that, that do what we're doing. Um, they're all at, at, at a very aggregate level, essentially a country level. Um, of course, this will um, overlook or, overlook or um, ignore any um, differences across industries and firms. Um, and ultimately we'd like to look at it, well, ultimately we'd like to look at it at a firm level, but here we're looking at it at, at least at an ind industry level, um, because ultimately countries don't make decisions, um, firms make decisions. Um, so again, to, to uh, repeat, uh, to our knowledge, um, there's no industry level investigations into the degree in which, uh, or whether or not um, GVC participation um, is, or can be a determinant of greater FDI. Uh, the three uh, papers that um, are most closely related to uh, our work would be um, Martinez Gala and uh, Fontura, 2018. Um, they look at aggregate FDI again at the country level, and um, and they use uh, Koopman et al.'s uh, classic seminal um, measure of GVC uh, participation. Um, it's a little bit hard to see my my PowerPoint got converted incorrectly. Um, but their basic finding is that yes, um, the higher the country's GVC participation rate, um, the higher the inward um, FDI stocks. And they're using um, different FDI data uh, than us as well. A second, uh, slightly more recent paper, um, Kirill Katia and uh, Pavlova, 2020. Um, they look at FDI. And again, they use the, the Koopman measure of GVC. Um, they also find a positive relationship. Um, but their FDI measure uh, uses or looks at um, mergers and acquisitions as, as the measure of FDI. Um, they also note in that paper that um, it's possible that um, foreign competition through imports could um, actually deter inward investment, deter um, um, uh, merger and, and acquisition activity. Um, they look at final goods, they look at um, developed and developing countries. So it's a little bit more um, detailed than the Martinez Gala Fontura paper, but still, at, again, at a very aggregate level, not, not at the industry level. Um, the most similar to our paper and, and the most recent um, would be by uh, George Gopalan and Jing, 2021, just last year. And they look at uh, Greenfield FDI. Uh, in fact, they use the same um, database that, that we do, although we have it for more years and we do it more detailed. Um, and they also use the, the Koopman et al. Uh, GVC participation index. Um, and they also find um, that sure enough, uh, GVC participation, um, and they focus on emerging economies, does attract uh, higher um, inward, um, inward flows. So um, I suppose one could say that there's maybe not a lot of controversy here. Maybe, maybe one would expect that higher um, participation in GVCs would attract FDI. Um, but we wanted to test it at a, at a deeper level, at a more um, disaggregate level. Um, and, and there's several other innovations that, that uh, I'll highlight. Um, I was gonna say one more thing, but I've, I forgot, but it'll come back to me. Um, right, so let me uh, move on. Um, more generally, uh, it, not necessarily a, a empirical per se, um, although, Baldwin does a lot of empirical work. Um, Baldwin has, has, has said many times in several works and the OECD sort of um, uh, concurs, I suppose, that um, there's not a lot of uh, substantial connections between regional v GVCs um, and, and GVCs are really important, of course, in um, East and Southeast Asia, North America, specifically um, Canada, America, and uh, Mexico, and in Central and Western and, and Central Europe. Um, so I'll come back to this later. Well, I, as it says in my slide, um, not only are we gonna look at industry, but we're also gonna um, investigate different regions. So we're gonna look at, does, do our findings hold for Europe? Do they hold for North America? Do they hold for East and Southeast Asia? 
do they also hold for Central Asia? Do they hold for, um, is there anything going on um, in Africa? So um, our database is a little bit broader and, and we're, we're gonna sort of answer this or at least um, touch upon this, this sort of claim by Baldwin that, that GVCs are really active in these three areas and, and not so active uh, elsewhere. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just drink a little water here. So um, the contribution of this work, I think, has three aspects. Uh, one, as I said many times, uh, we have more disaggregated data than the previous studies. Um, and again, uh, it, as, as we find, and as you'll see, um, this relationship between GVCs and more FDI occurs in some industries, um, but not others. So I think what we do here, um, looking at the disaggregated um, panels um, is important. Um, second, as, as I just mentioned, uh, we look at this relationship between FDI and GVCs across countries, sectors, industries, and, and regions. Um, but also, I, I suppose this is sort of a third of, of four points, um, we, we use a different measure of GVCs. So um, at Yokohama National University, um, one of my colleagues, uh, Nagendo Shreshra is, is a, um, we, we feel he's a world expert in um, international input output tables. And he's developed his own um, method of, um, his own um, input out, international input output tables on par with uh, the OECD's um, database and, um, uh, what's uh, IDE in, a, in, in a Japan. Um, so, so my student, my former student, um, has been studying with him a lot about input, um, international input output tables. And um, along the way, we've discovered, or we feel that um, Boren has developed yet another way. The, the point is there's many ways to measure GVCs, many ways to put them together. And we think um, that the Boren way is, is the best. Uh, hello, uh, konnichiwa. Oh, um, um, we think that this the Born measure measure is is superior or or at least more appropriate measure to use for the research question we have at hand. Um, so as I said before, most of the other studies use the Koopman method, um, and we're going to use the Born method. Um, this actually, three different measures of of GVC um, following the the Born method. And again, um, we'll look at regional differences as well. Um, let me just jump to sort of the conclusion. What are our main, our main finding or main findings? Um, indeed, we find that GVT participation, um, whether we measure it overall, sort of an average, or if we break it out into backward linkages and forward linkages, um, it is positively, there is a positive association overall um, with FDI. Um, however, we do find differences across um, industries, and it does indeed depend on the sector, and it does differ across regions. Um, when we really dig down into the, the, uh, the industry level, we find that, for example, um, the basic metals industry, so we're talking steel here, um, there seems to be a, a strong positive impact, both in the forward and backward linkages. That is to say, um, in the basic metals industry, the larger their um, participation is in global value change, ch chains, um, the more new uh, FDI comes into that, into that sector, into that country. Um, surprisingly, I think, and, and this is something that um, could be just a product of, of um, our, our, our econometrics, which, which still um, has room for improvement, or, or it could be something that's true. But what we find is that um, in the electronics industry, there doesn't seem to be this link between um, more global value uh, participation in global value chains and more FDI. And so we're trying to interpret that um, as, as we uh, um, continue our work in this area. Um, my my co-author, she's from Vietnam, and she's as as many um, in the audience probably know, Vietnam has been the recipient of a huge amount of uh, inward FDI um, from around the world, but uh, especially from Korea, Samsung and LG um, in electronics, 
And um, we have another small paper on that, um, measuring the magnitude and the effect on um, changing comparative advantage um, in Vietnam. Um, so, so she has a really strong interest in, in, in trying to figure out you know, what, what brings in more FDI um, to a country like hers in, in, in FDI uh, in, in Vietnam. And, and so um, these are our policy implications at, at, at the moment, um, but that, that could change as we continue. Um, but what, what she uh, interprets it is, um, for example, um, if there's a host country and um, the, 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 global, the global value chain participation is in the later st stage of production, um, for example, in our basic metals or in, in rubber and plastic, um, that perhaps the government might want to increase or improve or upgrade related infrastructure in that sector in the hopes of encouraging um, yet more FDI into that sector. Um, or introduce uh, new regulations or, or perhaps less regulations, which might fil facilitate uh, GVC, more v GVC activity, thereby uh, encouraging or increasing more inward FDI. Um, again, um, sort of summarizing our results, uh, we find that these results are stronger for Europe and Central Asia, and even Central Asia, um, East Asia and the Pacific, on, uh, North America, and less so for South Asia and less so for, or even non-existent for South Asia and Africa. So um, that may or may not be useful to um, policymakers in those countries. It's, it's sort of a mystery we'd like, we'd like to, um, to keep working on. Um, also machinery and equipment does not seem to be um, a sector with strong results. So thinking of transportation, automobiles, um, we don't find a robust relationship and so there's not a lot we can say about policy implications for, for that sector. Yeah, I guess, yeah, sure. Um, so uh, jumping to the equation, let me talk about, uh, it's an, econom an econometric exercise that we're doing here. Um, it's a panel, and this is our main, the, the general form of our estimated equation. So on the left-hand side, we have, uh, a proxy or a measure of um, what is called a foreign direct investment. Um, the GR means greenfield. So um, the, the data, the database we're using um, collects what it calls greenfield investment. And so our GR is not, it's not growth of FDI, it's greenfield FDI. Um, and that's actually FDI in dollars um, divided by uh, the country's GDP, um, also in dollars. The major uh, right-hand side variable is um, PRT, uh, GVC, and that's um, participation in uh, global value chains. Um, again, we use the um, velati boren mancini method. I'll just call it the Boren method. He has several papers on this, um, and that's the measure that we use. Um, we lag it for one period as, as part of our um, strategy to reduce uh, serious endogeneity issues. Um, and we have a number of um, fixed effects, country pair, um, source country, industry time fixed effect, um, sector specific fixed effect, and, and a time effect. So it's actually a, a pretty sparse model. Um, we'd like to add more variables and, and we've, we've received some good suggestions on, on that. Um, you know, our, our left-hand side variable is pretty, pretty narrow. It's pretty um, uh, narrowly defined, um, but we'll, and, and the fixed effects do capture a lot. Um, so adding another um, right-hand side variable is important, but we really have to think about how it fits in. So if anyone has any good ideas on that um, when I'm done, I'm, I'm happy to hear them. Um, but this is the basic uh, um, setup. So it's, it's, it's like a gravity style in the sense that um, size matters. So, um, Foreign direct investment is um, divided by the, the share of the host country's GDP. So larger countries should, on average, attract more FDI than, than smaller countries. Um, we do not have distance um, in this measure, but that's captured by the, um, the country pair fixed effect. So it's not a trade model, it's an FDI model, but it's a gravity style in a sense. Um, we use um, PPML, um, pseudo poisson maximum likelihood, uh, this is sort of the standard for gravity work nowadays. Um, there's a technical reason why we do that. Um, but the other non-technical reason, I suppose, is that we have lots of zeros, a lot of zero values. So 
we have countries, um, source countries, ac actually firms, we aggregate it to the, the um, industry level. We have um, a lot of countries in, investing in other countries, but we have a lot of country pairs that are not um, investing in each other. So maybe Nigeria is not investing in Vietnam, so that would be a zero in our panel. We have lots of those in our, in our world, worldwide uh, global database. So we have lots of zeros, um, and one solution to correct the bias from those zeros is to use the, um, the PPML. So we use that PPML in the, uh, the panel um, version of it. Uh, all the work has been done in, in Stata, um, and so we're using Stata code for all the, the regressions. Uh, let me go, hmm. yeah, sure. Um, let me spend a little bit more time talking about uh, the main variable, um, main left-hand side variable, uh, foreign direct investment. So the source we use is, um, it's called FDI. It's actually small f, big D, small i. It's this proprietary database um, generated, worldwide database generated, um, accumulated, updated every month by um, the Financial Times of, of London, so the, the British uh, newspaper. So um, what they call foreign direct investment is um, projects. Um, some people call them transactions. Um, and what they try to do is, is register and keep track of every single um, so-called greenfield uh, project that's been made around the world. So if Samsung in 2010 built a new factory in Hanoi, then the uh, FDI markets database will say, um, who is the, um, the uh, UBO, the, ult uh, the ultimate beneficial owner? So that's you know, Samsung um, Korea. Um, what, and, and what, what city are they based in in Korea? In Seoul, probably. And um, where are they investing? Well, they're investing in Vietnam. Where are they investing in, in, Vietnam, in Hanoi? Um, sometimes they have very, very detailed, Hanoi is very big. Sometimes they'll give the province or the village in, in Hanoi. So they'll get very detailed location um, information. Um, the Financial Times FDI Markets database, they assign um, their own code, their own uh, industry classification. And so um, what a co-author of mine on another paper, Nadia Deutsch, and her co-authors have kindly done is convert the Financial Times um, industry classifications into uh, SIT, SIC uh, classifications, two-digit classification. So we're using that two-digit classification um, for our FDI measure. Um, I, could, I could talk a lot more about the FDI, just let me, the database, um, let me talk a little bit more about it. Um, the, the key variables that we're looking at here, um, what they call FDI, what they call Greenfield FDI, of course, so it's, so it's new, um, not mergers, not acquisitions. Um, what they also include for their, um, each of their um, transaction data is what they call um, amount of capital and amount of employment. So if, um, if Samsung invests in Hanoi in 2010, and it's a, I don't know, a, a $1 billion plant, they will say that, that that capital is FDI capital $1 billion. And if Samsung says we're gonna hire 600 people there, then they will say labor employed is 600 people. So we have some kind of proxy for foreign direct investment, capital we'll call it, and some proxy for foreign direct investment um, measured by, by labor. So that's the, the FDI data, all measured in dollars. Um, I can send you some references if you wanna read more about this database. It is pretty widely used, um, but it has lots of problems. It, it has strengths, it's, it's global, it's got lots, lots of rich information, um, but I suppose like, like any data, it, it has its problems. Um, but that's what we're using here. Um, the GVC measures, uh, for this paper, we're, um, we're borrowing the, the Boren um, GVC measures at the industry level, country and industry level um, for, for our sample period. We've actually, um, there's so many ways to do it. And um, my co-author was working on generating our own GVC measures, um, um, but we just haven't got around to that. So, so for this paper, we're using the, the uh, Boren, uh, Bellotti, Mancini um, GVC measures. Um, years of the sample. So 2005 to 2015, um, that's all we have. We're limited by um, 
our FDI data actually goes back to 2003, I believe, and goes to, to 2017 or, or more recently, but the Born Mancini is only 2005 to 2015. So we're restricted. Um, this is really unfortunate because really the story we want to tell here is much longer than, than um, 11 years. You know, if there's an effect of GVC pulling in more FDI, um, it's going to have a long-term effect. It, it might have a short-term effect in, over a span of a couple of years, but really it's something it's a long-term effect as well. And, and we, we sure enough don't, don't capture all of that, but we're working well with what we have. Um, industries, we have uh, 15 industries. Um, they're the big ones. We, we leave some out um, either, either because we can't um, do a good matching. So we, we, used, um, we have to merge data. So when we merge data, the, um, the FDI data with this um, SIC codes and the um, GBC with this HS or SITC, but HS codes, um, we lose some in the matching. There's not some good matches, but we also sort of throw out a few categories which we think are um, maybe more challenging or more problematic. So agriculture, um, mining are, are things we, we uh, do not look at. So in the end, we have uh, 15 manufacturing industries. Uh, we have 64 host countries, that is to say recipients of FDI, and we have 88 source countries. So we do not have the whole world, but we have um, a very large uh, part of it. Um, depending on the measure, you know, we're capturing something like 85, 90% or more of, of world FDI, of, uh, of world FDI, or at least world FDI from the um, Financial Times uh, database. So you can see that the, it's pretty small there, um, but you can see that um, we have a wide range of industries and we have a wide range of host countries um, from around the world. Um, High income, low income, um, and again, from, from uh, all of the, the, the major continents. We don't have Antarctica, but we have uh, pretty much everything else. Okay. Um, jumping to the empirical results, um, we have several, several tables. So um, let me uh, show you the main one. So this is our, our um, overall uh, regression of FDI on GVC. And um, we basically do sort of two sets. Um, column one would be uh, foreign direct investment on that part GVC is actually overall GD GVC measure. Um, and we find that there's a positive and significant uh, um, relationship there. So more GVC or more higher levels of GVC participation seem to bring in more um, FDI. And then um, what we've done is break it out into uh, forward GVC and backward GVC. Uh, I'm going to talk more about that in the next slide. Um, but there too, we find that there's a, a positive correlation. So in the act in our aggregate, it's, it's still at an industry level, but overall for the full sample, um, we find positive correlations uh, throughout. Uh, as you can see, the observations are huge. Um, you know, to get and with all the zeros, it's got a lot of zeros in it. Um, to get that to fit into Stata, um, my, my co-author had to use this sort of compression code in Stata. Um, it's really a big data set just to get it to run. Um, so again, we think it's, our results have, have lots of weaknesses, but at least it's a global um, data set and it's, it is trying to um, answer this question for, for the entire world, um, but at a detailed level, which, which um, both um, are important contributions, I think, or at least important beginnings of, of a, a contribution. Uh, this is pretty small, um, but um, let me just talk a little bit about it. Um, and I, I just want to emphasize that there's there's more than one to measure. There's more than one way to measure GVCs, and I want to talk about that a little bit. And I just want to talk about what we mean by backward and forward uh, GVC participation. So um, again, the definition we use, um, and then and the, the measures we use are from Boren. Um, but they're very similar uh, to uh, going back to Hummel's, Ishii, and Yi, um, and they called it vertical specialization. And vertical specialization was um, import imported content as a share of exports. So we think of maybe Vietnam, maybe they import, maybe they export a lot of electronics, but the Im but the inputs to that maybe a lot of them come from China or Taiwan or some other country. So there's a high imported content to their exports. So processing trade would be something like that. So that would be a high degree of vertical specialization or um, really backward participation. Um, 
the other measure measure that that uh, Hummel, Dishi, and Yi call is they call it VS1, not not a very interesting name, um, but that would be the share of domestic value added that goes on to a second and perhaps third country for further processing and final consumption. So this is our forward and backward. Um, and for our purposes, um, we want to figure out um, is it that overall, basically the average of forward and backward contributes to more FDI, or when we break it down, maybe maybe it looks like overall contributes, but maybe most of that um, relationship is driven by maybe backward GVC participation in FDI, or maybe forward, and maybe that differs across industries. Um, so that's why we we um, do a number of regressions and a number of um, subsamples and so on to to sort of look at this relationship uh, from a variety of angles. Which again, uh, no one has done yet at an industry level. And no one has really broken it out, broken it down into backward and forward linkages as well, or backward and forward uh, GVC participation as well. So, oops. Um, so we're in Japan, so I wanted to use a little bit of animation. This is my cartoon. Um, so I guess I guess the stylized example of high uh, backward GVC participation would be the iPhone, right? Um, so a lot of the, you know, when the iPhone gets exported from China, maybe it's worth 200 or 300 or $600, but maybe $500, maybe 90% of the value is from imported inputs from another country. So that would be an example of high backward GVC participation. Um, so again, you know, would this, would, would a country that happens to have high backward GVC participation, would, would that encourage more countries to invest in that country? Maybe, you can think maybe, um, but you could think maybe not. Um, there's, and there's um, intuition and, and logic and, and a few theoretical models that point to in either direction. But that's what we mean by um, an example of high backward uh, GVC participation. Um, sort of a stylized example of high forward GVC participation would be diamonds in Botswana. Um, I must admit, Botswana is a great example, but it's actually not in our data set. Um, but if we think of um, Botswana, they dig out the rough uncut diamond, um, they export it to, um, a lot of it goes to India, and then it goes to, I thought it was going to go to Holland, but if you look at the trade data, it goes to Belgium for some reason. Um, and then it goes on for more processing, cutting, and then it's exported again. So that would be an example of high forward GVC participation. Um, so let me just go back maybe. So again, in our, in our um, when we break it out in the overall sample, um, overall, so again, um, that top column one variable is the average of forward and backward GVC participation rate. Um, and then we break it out into forward and backwards separately. Um, but it's positive across the board. Um, next, uh, this table 4A, um, we break it out. Um, we don't show all the industries, um, all 15 of them. We just highlight a few of them. And uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in my, uh, in my presentation, um, we get some sort of, I don't, I don't know, I guess they're surprising results. So for example, um, if we look at overall participation in GVCs, we see, see a strong um, positive relationship between GVC participation and rubber and plastic um, inward FDI. And also we find um, that, this, that, is, that this relationship is actually all driven by um, the backward type, backward component of global value chain participation. Uh, we're thinking about why that would be the case. You know, every, every industry is different. The more you know about an industry, the more you can sort of hypothesize about why this is true. And that's that's part of part of what we're doing. Um, but moving on, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, basic metals, also um, positive relationship in the overall, but also positive um, both in the forward and backward um, measures when we break them out. So um, I, I suppose one could say that any, any type of increased um, participation in global value chains should draw in more, um, New or greenfield FDI, as defined in, in this in this paper. Um, 
Again, the surprising result we thought um, is that, and well, the other thing is that um, if we look at um, computers, electronics, and optical, um, not significant. So, you know, these, these are the industries we, when we think of global value chains, this is what we think of. Um, but um, there doesn't seem to be a relationship the way we're doing it with GVC on the, the, um, on the right side and FTI on the, on the left hand side. Uh, and for machinery and equipment, the relationship is negative, both in the overall and, um, and forward and backward, and also in other transport, not motor vehicles, so no results there. And then other transport, we have um, a negative, strong negative relationship in um, when we look at the forward uh, GVC participation rate. Um, next, we uh, look at different, different um, subsample uh, regional differences. So we, like, we, we do the same thing, but just for the um, transactions um, in Europe and Central Asia, and just for East Asia and Pacific, and just for North America, and so on. Um, we, we were thinking of doing this, but, but, but I have to admit that um, um, Professor Kiyotaka Sato, who is also a researcher at this institution many years ago, and is my colleague at, at Yokohama National University, he really wanted to see, and, and he's the main advisor actually of, of uh, Wu Hong Ha, he really wanted to see the, the regional breakdown. Um, and I think he, he was really convinced he would see more of this relationship in electronics in East Asia. But actually the results are not very robust. And that, that could be either again, because our econometrics is still suffering from a lot of problems, which it probably is, or, or maybe, maybe that, that relationship um, that we were thinking of is just not, not simply there. Um, so we have a lot to think about, um, but these are the, the, um, the regional subsamples. So you have highlighted these, these red boxes are um, where there's a strong positive relationship. And then we can jump over. So Europe and Central Asia, East Asia and Pacific. You know, Central Asia, I, I, I think this includes Turkey and, and Turkey is a big, um, Turkey is like the China of Europe, right? So. They're, they're producing a lot of parts and shipping them to Germany and so on. So um, I don't know how much of it's driven by Turkey and, and, and other Central Asian countries, but we have Europe, um, East Asia, North America, basically NAFTA, but then Latin America and Caribbean, uh, not, nothing really going on there. Although actually in forward GVC, there is something. She didn't highlight that. I'm not sure why. Um, and in Africa, there does seem to be something going on in the forward, but not the overall. So. Um, Whatever we're finding seems to be um, happening um, in those three regions, but, but not the other two. So this generally supports um, Richard Baldwin's view that you know, global value chains, really important, really um, dynamic in these three regions and the rest of the world, uh, not so much. So our results are consistent with that. Um, again, to, to, uh, to pull out just the computer electronics and optical, um, Again, this is really what Professor Sato is hoping to find some relationship there. And there really isn't anything um, the way we do it, at least. Um, yeah, this is probably a good time. So I'll talk about a robustness check. Um, and that's a great time to talk about the serious um, endogeneity problem that we have here. So, um, you know, ultimately we have FDI on the left-hand side, and GVC on the, on the right-hand side. So as I said at the beginning of the talk, most people, and there's, I don't know how many papers, but probably a hundred papers that look at the question or try to measure how much does more FDI increase the GVC participation rate? In, in a sense, I guess, I guess that's an important one, but I, it's maybe the answer is maybe pretty obvious that, that, that more FDI, because FDI is brought in by multinationals, would increase participation almost automatically, almost by definition, um, would increase the global value chain participation. So there's a lot of studies, probably over 100 studies, looking at does F more FDI cause um, the GBC participation rate to go up? Okay. But we're looking at the other way. Does a country that has more um, participation in GBCs attract more new greenfield um, FDI? And that again, there's only three or four papers that do that. Um, the problem this creates is that, that probably both things are true. So 
um, more FDI probably does most likely increase GVC and many studies have found that. So when we put FDI on the left-hand side, uh, we have a serious uh, endogeneity problem or reverse causality problem or simultaneity problem or whatever you wanna call it. Um, so we have this serious endogeneity problem. You know, we're, we're aware of it right from the beginning. Um, it's mitigated to some extent by sort of three things we do, um, but it's really something we're still um, concerned about and, and, and definitely have to um, um, improve upon. But the one thing is um, our left-hand side variable is very narrowly defined. So this is, um, I forget what I and J is, but I is, is industry, J is host country, Gee, I don't even know what K is. Uh, host country sector, and shouldn't maybe be a K, um, and time. So it's very narrowly defined on the one side, and then um, on the, the GVC measures are more broad. So we have um, basically a more narrowly defined left-hand side variable and a right-hand side variable. So that reverse feedback or that reverse cause causality should be less serious, um, but I think it's still there. So, um, the other small thing we do, of course, is we um, we uh, lag the variables to um, to mitigate that simultaneity effect, but that's that's really not going to do it. Again, this this relationship in both directions between GVC and FDI and FDI and GVC has both short run components and also long run components. So that one year lag is not going to correct it. It's not going to be sufficient to correct it. Um, our narrow left hand side variable mitigates it to a, to a larger degree, I think. Um, and then our last, uh, for now, method to, um, to tackle this, uh, this uh, endogeneity issue is we do system GMM, as many other um, authors in this empirical FDI literature do to, to address this type of, of endogeneity, but also other, other types of similar endogeneity in panel. Um, so we do that and we are addressing that serious endogeneity concern. And, and these are the results we find that sure, FDI causes more, GVC, that's what the other literature has found, but in some cases, more GVC, even controlling for the endogeneity um, <clears throat> does seem to increase uh, inward FDI. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I guess that's the end of my slide. Um, let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the references. Um, if you want to know more about um, the database we're using, um, the, the Financial Times, F, Big D, Small I, um, Beldebros and his, his authors, they use it. Um, Beldebros is, is a well-known um, leader in, in empirical FDI. He typically uses other data, um, but in this one paper in R&D, he does use um, the same database as us um, because it's global. It is comprehensive. It is global. But in that paper, he also talks, he has a nice two-page write-up on, on the weaknesses, the strengths, but also the, the, the weaknesses of, of the data we're using. Um, the Bellotti, <clears throat> Born Mancini, there's a, yeah, and Born Mancini over here, there's a couple of papers here, um, are a really nice paper, um, a set of papers. I mean, some of the papers are great because um, he really explains, they really explain um, going back to Hummels and Ishii and Yi and Koopman, how they're, how all these measures of GVC are the same and how they're different and how they overlap and why you should use some GVC measures in, in certain research questions and you should use other measures of GVC for other research questions. So it's a really nice um, sort of literature survey, but, but, but the math behind like this measure is a subset and encompasses that one and it encompasses half of that one, but not that one. And uh, it's, it's really a, a nice uh, uh, analytical critique of, of all these uh, measures. And then um, Bourne and his, his colleagues developed their own measure of um, GVCs, which they, they argue is superior to the other ones. So, and if you're interested in GVCs, this, um, the Bourne papers are really a good place to go to um, to get a, get a handle on, on all the different measures. Um, this paper, this last one here, George Gopalan and Jing um, is also really nice. Um, it does same database as us. The GVC data is not boring. They use Koopman. It's a little bit older. They focus on a narrower um, uh, set of countries, but um, 
but they do dig into the um, and develop a, a rough, a, no, I, would, I shouldn't say rough, but a simple but a theoretical model, mathematical model of why would G, more GVC pull in more FDI. So um, that's nice that they have that element. So they have a model and they have some empirics, but again, um, we think our our paper is is uh, um, an improvement upon that because we do the industry level and, and some other things. Um, and again, here's some classic, you know, the Hummels paper with the vertical specialization, Koopman's now sort of the, the, the standard, old standard, and uh, some other papers that um, the Martinez Galan Frontura, which is somewhat what we do, but at an aggregate level, and the Martinez, oh, no, it's different, yeah. Um, this other one, the Wang Wei, uh, you and Zhu is also uh, another new, new way to, uh, this is probably the newest measure of GBC prior to, to Born, um, I suppose, appear. And then um, Velachi, Deutsch, and Yonzan, um, I just want to uh, thank uh, Deutsch and Yonzan because they're the ones that took the, the Financial Times database and converted it from the Financial Times um, industry codes to um, IS, uh, yeah, ISIC. Um, two-digit codes, which which we use here. 